Hello everyone, welcome to my hobby table, and in this video we will take a look at the Big 3 Tech K Touch screen. This device can be also flashed with Panda Touch firmware, which gives you flexibility in case you decide to switch over Bamboo Lab printers into the future. However, there is a little catch, and we will talk about it later into this video. Unboxing was pretty straightforward, and inside of the box you will get manual, the device itself with a magnetically attached USB-C charging dock, mounting bracket, USB-C cable, hex key wrench and couple of M36 screws. Of course, don't forget about legendary rubber duck. Let's start with hardware. The device is driven by ESP32-S3 with 8MB of RAM and 16MB of flash memory and powered via USB-C at 5 volts with a built-in battery life up to 30 minutes, which isn't much. In terms of connectivity, this product is compatible with 2.4 GHz BG and Wi-Fi networks and in case if you want to print from an external USB drive, the product has USB port on the side. The 5-inch APS screen with a resolution of 800 x 480 is alright, though I feel like pixel density and resolution could be much better. The screen seems to have a capacitive touch layer, which feels very responsive and doesn't require much effort to register actions. What I don't like is that the device is glued together, and there is no simple way to get inside, which kind of goes against open source nature of 3D printing hobby. For example, if you want to replace the battery, you simply can't do it without breaking the screen. I tried to open the device with the help of alcohol and hot air station, and it seems that Big 3 Tech used some kind of glue that fused the screen and the body together. The bond is very strong. Isopropyl alcohol also removed part of the soft touch finish, so be careful. With the device we get a charging dock plate, the magnets are pretty strong and I really like the idea of using pogo pins to pass power to the screen motherboard. You also have the opportunity to plug in I2C devices such as humidity and temperature sensors, but so far I haven't seen any actual implementations. Let's talk about firmware. I had this device for about a month and I experienced a few critical issues specifically with the Clipper Touch firmware. Initially it was impossible to add device outside of class C network. Also the emergency stop button wasn't working properly at all. As of today, I'm happy to announce that both of these issues have been fixed and so far the device receives frequent updates, which is very nice to see. I can only hope it stays this way or maybe if Big3 Tech decides to drop support we get access to the firmware and community will be able to compile their own versions which is currently not available. The process of updating and changing the firmware is pretty straightforward, since the device supports over-the-air updates. Big3 Tech has done a very good job providing a detailed manual on how to do this. It takes only a few minutes to switch between K-Touch and Panda Touch, but keep in mind that during the process you will lose all previous configurations. Into the Clipper world, the main competitor for this product is Clipper Screen. This is my Clipper screen project, I want to do something similar to K-Touch but with full-size Raspberry Pi and have full control over the Clipper firmware. Subscribe to see more about this project into the future. Overall functionality for Clipper firmware is pretty straightforward, you have opportunity to set up Wi-Fi settings, brightness, timeout, language, color for the screen and system information. Then we go to select printers, you have opportunity to add printers via IP address and select one of those printers and then basic calibration and stop status PID Z calibration then you have opportunity to move axis and set up temperature let's say you click home you can hear my printer right now is homing you have opportunity to move axis up and down let's say you want to preheat extruder or bed you pick the temperature or preset problem is that those are presetted values and they might not reflect what you actually want let's say I want to cool down we start printing, you have opportunity to print from the clipper itself and from the USB disk. I feel like K-Touch lacks of freedom to create custom thermal profiles and macroses and overall. It's pretty strict about what you can do with it. You can only get what Big3 Tech decides is important. It is worth mentioning that the company accepts feature requests, but who knows how quickly those will be implemented. And that's pretty much it for the clipper firmware. Let's go to the Panda Touch. 
The situation is very similar with Panda Touch firmware. However, Panda Touch relies on Bamboo Lab, who controls the connection protocols to their printers. In upcoming firmware updates, Bamboo Labs could change something that affects the connection between Panda Touch and your Bamboo Lab printer. The Panda Touch firmware looks a bit more polished for me, and it makes sense because this device is probably more aimed at towards Bamboo Labs owners. Let's take a look. First thing, you have opportunity to home the printer, move axis, change the temperature for your nozzle and the bed. You have opportunity to change fans speeds, 10% increment. Then we go in AMS, you have opportunity to load and load filaments. And Panda PWR model, if you have one, you can enable and disable printer remotely, which is actually a pretty good idea. Then we go into the settings, you can log in into your Bamboo Lab account. Into the network settings, you have opportunity to see your Wi-Fi's and then you can add multiply printers and that's pretty much it bamboo labs firmware looks touch better currently as far as i know there is only one competitor to panda touch the open source x touch project which teaching tech has made very good video about i highly recommend you watching it as this option is significantly cheaper than panda touch all links will be into the description to summarize this is a very basic device that out of the box has everything needed for a casual 3d printer user it's actually a good upgrade option for people who own something like bamboo lab p1s however if you are an advanced user you will definitely find this device lacking of features and upgradability unfortunately there is no way to use the device as clipper screen i wish we had custom firmware and header to connect it to the existing clipper setup that would make this device very attractive to advanced clipper users i hope this video was helpful like subscribe leave your comments and i see you the next one bye bye